Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. The incredible interconnecting stone walls that we find in South America in sites such as Alantitambo, Machu Picchu, Cuzco and more are some of the most incredible megalithic constructions in the world because nobody knows with any certainty just how they were built. In the past I presented a couple of different ideas including stone softening techniques but the debate on how they were built remains wide open. They are a true enigma of history. Experts also can't agree on their age. Archaeologists generally attest that the Inca constructed them, whilst independent researchers believe they are pre-Inca, and there is a great deal of evidence to back up this claim. In this video, I will not be looking at how and when, but the question of why such walls were built, because it would be far easier and less labour intensive for the ancient people to construct a wall with more regular shaped blocks, or the more simple dry stone wall building techniques. Most people agree that these walls were built to last, and their fine interlocking nature was to prevent earthquake damage in this seismically active part of the world. And although I do agree that this interpretation is correct, there is evidence to say that this is only part of the reason. The Great Pyramid of Egypt was built to last, and it is no coincidence it encodes huge amounts of mathematical knowledge, which is the true universal language. It was built onto uneven bedrock, and just like the pre-Inca stone walls, this was to ensure stability and longevity. The Giza pyramid builders ensured their structures, and hence their knowledge, would stand the test of time as they silently wait for the brightest minds to interpret them and unlock their secrets. I believe that the pre-Inca stone walls are exactly the same. To me the quality and difficulty of the stonework implies that there must have been a greater reason for this type of construction and to ensure their survival. Surely these structures must be telling us something more. Many of the world's most famous artists have encoded secrets into their work. Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa contains unknown symbols not visible with the naked eye. Letters and numbers are found in the eyes and also under the arch of the bridge in the background. The painting known as the Last Supper also has symbolism hidden within. With works such as these, there is not just a code but hidden depth. The more you look at them, and the more you study them, the more you see and the secrets of such paintings are revealed. I think exactly the same can be said not just for the Giza Plateau in Egypt, but also the Peruvian stone walls, and although this is a relatively new area of study, with very little work done to date, I think that going forward this is something we can all take a look at. The idea came to mind after watching a couple of videos by Brian Forster, whose channel is linked below in the description. He shows how some of the polygonal stones that make up a wall in Cusco create the shape of a puma, and as we can see in this picture, where the specific blocks have been artificially highlighted, the shape of the animal is clear. Of course, in real life the blocks are all the same colour, so it takes a trained eye to pick out the puma, but when you see it, it seems obvious. To the ancient people of this part of the world, the puma was a sacred spirit animal. It has patience, power and strength. It was the symbol of life on earth. It was considered the greatest predator and something to emulate. It was so important that the entire city of Cusco was designed in the shape of a puma. If you take a map of the city, you can still make out a primitive puma with the ancient site of Sacsayhuaman as the head. Everybody is in agreement that this is no coincidence. So, if an entire city was laid out in homage to an important animal, it is no surprise that this and other sacred beasts can be found encoded into the stone walls of the ancient Peruvian settlements. What we see today are the forgotten and damaged ruins of a past civilization, and for all we know the interconnecting stones could have once been painted to highlight the imagery we are only just beginning to see. So, back to the question I wanted to answer with this video, why did the ancient Peruvians build these interlocking stone walls? The first reason is obvious, to withstand some of the most destructive forces in the world, earthquakes. But I believe another reason was to encode sacred cultural imagery and knowledge that was important to their civilization. The walls were built to last, and I believe they could well be a time capsule of knowledge. Books get burnt or lost, wars, drought, disease, poverty and nature can destroy civilizations, but these stone walls, like the pyramids of Giza in Egypt, were built to outlive any human civilization, and I'm sure they knew this, and that is why they went to the trouble they did. Everything we see in ancient Peru is symbolic. They have recorded their culture in stone, and I've got a number of fantastic examples to show you. Let's go back to the Cusco Puma. 
as well as the animal being outlined in stone, the head block even has a mouth and eye on its surface. The front and rear paws have protrusions to define them, and this small triangle is the puma's reproductive organ. To me, this is rather telling. When we look at the stone walls and see a tiny block inserted, it probably isn't to simply fill a gap, it was probably of anatomical significance, or an integral part of a picture. Of course, finding an animal inside a stone wall is a difficult process, and as we can see here, somebody on the internet has tried to highlight the puma, but has not used the correct blocks to outline it. It is a subjective area of study, and not as easy as most would imagine. But this section of the wall is particularly special, because running through the puma from right to left, we also find a snake as shown here. To give us a clue, the eye of the snake has also been left as a raised part of the head block as well. Furthermore, as stated in one of Brian Forster's videos, you can also trace the outline of a condor. So, the three most important spirit animals to the ancient Peruvian cultures are all encoded into one stretch of wall, which is certainly incredible and no accident. Away from Cusco, and to the site of Chocociro, if I've said that correctly, we see less well-known but relatively famous animal depictions in the walls, this time of llamas, another animal important to Peru. The quality is not comparable to the incredible interconnecting blocks we just saw in Cusco, but it is fantastic work nonetheless. In this specific case, the llamas themselves are made of different types of stone to make them stand out. But this is certainly interesting, as it could be that later people attempted to replicate the creations of their ancestors, an attempt to carry on the tradition of building animals into stone structures. Maybe this was a clue left by the Inca regarding the nature of the earlier stone walls found around Peru. So, we have one famous and well-documented wall in Cusco that incorporates animals, and one much later structure which incorporates them in a very obvious manner, but is there anything else? The truth is, by all accounts, people haven't really been looking. But if we did spend time analysing the walls, who knows what we would find. But even though there has been no specific study, to my knowledge, some independent researchers have made discoveries of animals and images within the ancient walls, but these seem to have fallen under the radar. The website tamputoko.com believes to have found animals in the stone fortress of Saxo-Hulman, as shown here. The walls of this site are partially buried, and were also greatly reduced in size by the Spaniards, who used the stone for new buildings in Cusco. But here we see a snake's head and part of its body, and this stone formation has been interpreted as a leg and paw of a puma, although it could also be interpreted as a rising sun between two mountains. Maybe it's both. The author of the website says that other animals are clear to see, but the removal of the stone by the Spanish means we can never see the complete picture. Since I began writing the script for this video, I thought I would scan photos on the internet to try and make my own observations. And whether or not this has been highlighted before, I don't know. But here I see another snake at Sacsayhuaman, with a head almost identical to the one we see at Cusco. There was probably once a great deal more to find at Sacsayhuaman, but the damage by the invading Spaniards is probably too great. This famous image, often used to highlight the skill of craftsmanship, may have once depicted a person in a similar abstract style that we see in Inca art, and this is an important thing to understand. The style of Inca and likely pre-Inca art may mean that depictions in the stone walls don't obviously jump out at us. To find them, we need to have a clear understanding of the art of the ancient Peruvian cultures. My belief is that the stonework was more than just structures, boundaries and defence, but they were built in such a way to tell the story of the Inca and pre-Inca civilizations, an area of study that would make for a fantastic PhD subject I'm sure. We have a blank canvas, and it requires out of the box thinking to decipher the code. We need to look at these structures in a different way. Our eyes are immediately drawn to the quality of craftsmanship, but I think to truly understand them, we actually need to look past it. For example, did these stones once represent people, decorated with faces and clothing, much like the stone heads of Easter Island, maybe as a way to ward off threats from possible enemies? Maybe this is a stretch, maybe the whole concept is, but we do need to make certain leaps if we are to unravel the truth. The ancient Peruvians had a deep respect for nature, and as well as animals, certain prominent blocks were also shaped to mimic the mountains. Here we see one carved exactly like the mountains behind it. As stated by the website PhenomenalPlace.com, if you stand directly behind this rock, it perfectly matches the mountain. 
the Incas worship mountain spirits called Apus, and the website mentioned speculates that because the fog would often cloud the mountains, they were carved onto rocks within specific enclosures for worship or meditation. Here we see another example of a block modelled on a mountain. Again, the similarity to the backdrop is no accident. The ancient people of Peru were master masons, and there is a huge amount of evidence that the natural world that was sacred to them was built in stone. Here we see the outline of a llama in the ruins of Machu Picchu, shown by the same website. These were incredibly important animals used by humans for transportation and were clearly respected. This outcrop is interpreted as the sleeping woman. It isn't just a natural rock outcrop, there is clear evidence that it has been sculpted in such a way. Apparently on the same rock, traces of gold were found etched onto it, but there is no known interpretation for what it means. Some have even speculated that the mountain behind Machu Picchu is a giant head looking up to the sky, something that once you see, you can't unsee. Of course, not all of the animal motifs are encoded, and some are displayed far more blatantly in relief on individual blocks, in a similar way to what we see at Gebekli Tepe. If nothing else, I hope this video helps us to see the incredible stonework of ancient Peru in a new way. We can all look at pictures of the stone walls in question and look to see what, if anything, we can find. But as I've stated, the damage to many sites is probably too great to find anything spectacular. If you want to try it yourself, I would recommend doing some research on what was sacred to the Inca and pre-Inca civilizations, look at examples and styles of ancient art, and then see what you can find. You can Instagram, Facebook or tweet me your finds, and hopefully in the near future I'll be making a follow-up video where I'll display all the new discoveries that come to light. We don't all have the opportunity to do a PhD thesis, or to write a paper on a new discovery, but if you think there is more to this, we can all contribute and unravel this ancient mystery encoded in stone. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.